Hello everyone, Farhan Third here and a very quick video about the rack and about the rotor packs. I get usually two questions. How come I managed to slim the rack so much that it's like this? And the second question is, how come I can mount my rotor packs on the rack without using the X-frame plate and the mount for the rotor packs? So I'm going to answer these two questions, but first, one thing to get straight. I bought this in 2019 as a first version of Auto Contact Rack. Since then, what they did is they did asymmetrical version, which is slimmer on this side and the same width as normally on the other side because of the exhaust. Um, and uh, they also made now the version 2, which is lower than the version 1, which I have. Now, why would they do that? Not only because the weight would be lower, but also because if you mount a backcountry Moscow onto the normal version 1, the pannier will sit above the seat. And it's really inconvenient because you cannot put a big duffel across, you have to put it that way, which doesn't make any sense. Um, and that's the reason why I got rid of the backcountry, to be honest, because it was way too high. So that is one, if you're thinking about backcountries, definitely version 2. And um, now, the original version 1, which I had, had the width of 61 centimeters. The normal asymmetrical version, which they produced, has a width of 51. And after all the modifications which I did, let's look what I achieved and how slim it is, and then we can look at the rotor packs. When you look at the bike from the behind, the rack really is snug to the bike and it's snug to the exhaust on this side and it's really snug on this side just to allow the rotor packs to be mounted. Now, in order to achieve this, what I have is that I have the um, high exhaust and that not only repositions the exhaust higher, but more importantly, it puts the exhaust closer to the bike, basically under the fairing. And that allows the rack on this side to be mounted uh, much closer to the bike. And on the other hand, on this side, you can see that the rotor packs is actually under the fairing as well. And I get to that uh, later. So really high exhaust is a must for this modification. What we also had to do is um, change completely the rear bracket and everything. So what it entails? Well, you have to gut the whole rack. All these mounting points, they need to be changed, cut it, as well as this bottom one. And that allows the rack to come this close to the bike, which is pretty cool. And by the way, this rack is now 41 centimeters wide um, instead of 51 on the asymmetrical version. So that is massive, massive improvement. Now the rotor packs magic. So <laughs> obviously the rotor packs is not mounted on the plate, which usually is used for that and the bracket, simply because as the rack is slimmer and it's more pushed towards the bike, there is no space for the rotor packs to be mounted. So we had to come up with something else because I really, really wanted to keep the rotor packs. And um, what we did is that we had welded the bracket in here. And that is one mounting point for the rotor packs. And then it just rests on the crossbar over here. And what do you get with this solution is that this bracket is here just uh, to simply hold it in place. So in case the bracket fails or something or um, that it doesn't actually falls off. So that's nothing um, important, but what it does is just you can just slide it off and the bracket looks like this. Very simple solution. This is covered with the duct tape with the plastic so it doesn't scratches the rotor packs. The same here on the crossbar where it actually touches the crossbar and rests on it. And really that's all what you need to have this wonderful simple solution for the rotor packs and you just need to make sure that um, it's 
properly slot in there. And that's all. That's all what I did. Obviously, you have to have a high exhaust. Obviously, you have to have a really good welder, uh, which a punk motor is. And yes, it is completely custom job. So you pay twice. You basically pay for the rack and then you pay for the modification. But on the other hand, you get a solution which works really well because I got rid of the rack because it was too wide. The rack class didn't work. I have another video about that. And this solution is absolutely perfect what I want because I want to have just a simple saddlebags around here and a duffel over there. And I want to keep the rotor packs. This solution has done almost 10,000 kilometers. The rotor packs didn't move. It's not damaged, it's perfect. So yeah, it's the custom job, but I think it's worth of the money. And to be honest, this is how the Outback Mototech rack should probably be engineered. I know there's the exhaust, but you know, I wish the bike would have high exhaust and the Outback would be like this. So that's it.